Sorry, it's laundry day, so there's going to be some noise in the background. Um, I went to the junk store and I found this weird thing here and uh, I needed to buy it. <laughs> uh, and it was a, a, some kind of filter and it was soldered in three places. It was soldered on the ends and soldered in the middle there and I could take, I could take the cover off. So there's the part number. I couldn't find anything online uh, on, on what this thing is. But um, uh, who's, is that Mitsubishi? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember who is insignia that is. Anyway, I took the uh, I took the cover off here, and look at this. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> Looks like a diplexer. So um, there's one obviously one lower frequency over here and one higher frequency over here, and it's marked. Let's see, where was that marked? Is it marked on here? Yeah, it's marked on here. So this is marked antenna, A-N-T. So the antenna goes in the middle here. And then uh, T-X is over here and R-X is over here. So it's transmitting on this frequency and receiving on this frequency. So the way that a diplexer works is, is uh, the transmitter goes through here and comes out, but it's at a different frequency than this, and so it won't go through there. So this is this is a band pass, and this is a band pass. This is tuned for just a singular frequency, and this is tuned for a frequency. And so it lets this frequency through, but it gets blocked here, and then uh, the receiver only hears what it wants to hear. Uh, it doesn't get swamped by the uh, by the transmitter or the other way around. So. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, I don't know what frequencies these things operate, but it's probably, oh, it's probably up or near a gigahertz. So, yeah, let's uh, hook up some test equipment and see if I can't figure out what frequencies uh, these two cavities are. All right, so I brought up my little uh, sweeper here, um, and I have it hooked up. I put in some... Uh, SMA connectors on the uh, filter so I can make easy easy connection to it. So I'm uh, taking the output of the RF generator into the antenna and then I've got the uh, antenna side uh, going in the middle and then I've got the, let's see, this is the transmit side. The transmit side is going off to the, uh, going off the spectrum analyzer. I have the, uh, I have the sweep set here from 800 to 1,000 megahertz. Okay, so 800 to 1,000. And over here on the spectrum analyzer, I'm showing uh, 850 in the center and a 200 megahertz span. And I think if you watch it here, uh, the span is happening slow from left to right. Um, and there, there the signal appears. And then it disappears, so that's the band pass. So we can set trace to a max hold, and we'll let it do another. Uh, we'll let it do another sweep here. We should be able to see the shape of the uh, shape of the filter. There it is. All right. So let's just. Uh, Let's just uh, turn this off. Let's see here. Single sweep. There we go. That'll, that should shut it off. All right. So now we can do marker functions uh, and try to figure out what this thing is. Now there is a marker function here that does an automatic, so they can remember how to get to it. Um, let's see. Measure. Um, NDB points, let's see, FFT, is this it? Yeah, this is it. So it uh, automatically finds the, the minus three DB points and then it tells you, uh, it tells you what's going on. And it says that it's 38.5 megahertz wide, okay? And then we can turn the marker on. We can kind of go here to the center. It's about 8, 832. So that sounds familiar. 832 sounds like a familiar frequency. So it's 832 in the center. And it's uh, 38 uh, megahertz wide. 
So let's go ahead and write that down. Let's see, so it's about 8, 32 and 38.50 wide. All right, so let's see if we can't figure out what the, um, uh, what the receipt side does. All right, I moved it off to the uh, receive side and let's see if we see something. Uh, yep, there, there it is. Let's do a uh, peak search. That's happening at around 882. So let's put the frequency at 880 and let's do a span of 200 again. All right. And there it is. Very nice. So let's uh, do a trace max hold. We'll let it sweep through. I'm going to let it run one more time to get rid of those little spikes up at the top. I don't think my uh, bandwidth measurement will be accurate if it has those little dips in it. They look like they might be more than uh, 3 dB down. There we go. Yeah, I got rid of those. Okay, so now we can do, uh, we can lock that up and we can do a measure 3 dB points. And there we go. So this one's narrower. This one is uh, 33 megahertz wide. 33 wide. And it looks like it's centered on about right around there, around 880, 881, we'll call it 880. All right, so uh, let's go back to our little device here. So this thing seems to be a di uh, duplexer and duplexer or diplexer? Mm, not sure now. <laughs> uh, this is the receive side, it's up at 880 and it is 33 megahertz wide and this is the lower frequency it's at 832 and it's 83.5 wide so um, please don't ask me to adjust these <laughs> please don't ask me to do that um, you need very specialized equipment to do that you need a very high um, a very good vna to do it and a nano vna is not good enough uh, Alan's already done a video on that, and it, yeah, nano VNA just doesn't cut it for for uh, for cavities like this, and especially little tiny ones like this. I think he was doing it for 140 or 440 megahertz, and these are tinier. You need something really, really accurate to uh, really, really accurate to adjust these. And you, even then, I might be lost. There's quite a few knobs here: one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, and six on that on both sides. So. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, I thought you'd, uh, I thought you'd enjoy this thing. I might, uh, now that I know what it is, uh, do I want another one or not? I think it was $3. I think I bought it for $3. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that.